Creating backups is one of the fundamental things that you must do when running a smart home. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you the simplest way to automate your home assistant backups. Check it out. Previously, if you ever wanted to make use of backups in Home Assistant, you'd need to either manually create these, or you'd need to write some form of automation or script, or make use of a custom add-on or some form of custom integration in order to actually provide this functionality for you. And while these are fine and these methods do work, they're not necessarily the safest and not necessarily the best, and that's where the latest Home Assistant update comes in. In the latest release of Home Assistant, backups have received a massive overhaul and this makes it really easy and really intuitive to natively set up and create your own backups. In order to make use of the new backup system, you will need to be running version 2025.1 as the bare minimum version. And once you've confirmed that you have at least this version, you can carry on with making use of the new system. With that confirmed, you can go ahead and press settings, system, backups, and then you'll be greeted by the new backup page. From here, we can see that because it's the first time we've used it, we've got this new option to set up backups, and we've also got the option for my backups. Selecting setup backups will guide us through the brand new wizard, which will help us set up our automated backups. Show all backups will take us into a list of all the backups that we have, and we're able to see where those backups are and how they were created. You've also still got the big blue button that gives you the option to back up now, so if you wanted to do that, you could just select this button. To get started with your backups, you guessed it, you're of course going to have to press that setup backups button, and when you select this, you'll be prompted with that brand new wizard. If you purchased one of the Home Assistant voice preview editions, then you'll definitely be familiar with this, and I really love the fact that this new flow also incorporates the same design. It's got a very uniform feel to it, and of course, we love seeing the little casa. Home Assistant follows the 321 backup rule, which is a backup strategy aimed at protecting your data. And if you're interested in knowing a bit more about the 321 rule and how it works, then I'll leave a little link in the description. You can go and read about that. But we're not going to go into that too much, and we're just going to go ahead and press the next button. Once you press next, you'll be presented with your encryption key. And this encryption key is used to encrypt your backup, and you'll need to provide this key whenever you're doing any kind of restore. From this little window, you've got a couple of options for copying the key out. You could simply just press the copy button and then you've got it copied into your clipboard. And from here, you could just paste it into your password manager or some other secure document. The other option that you have is to download the emergency kit. If you press the download button, it will download a text version of your encryption key, along with some instructions and a link on how to actually use the restore functionality. If you do download the encryption key, then you should of course store that text document somewhere secure and somewhere safe because anybody could access that text file and just take your key out. Once we've got our encryption key stored somewhere securely, we can go ahead and press next and this will present us with the next set of options. These next options are to do with setting up the automatic backups. We can make use of the recommended Home Assistant backup settings, which follows the system timings for when backups are performed and provides you with a complete backup for at least three days. Or you can opt for the custom settings, which allows you to customize the schedule to your own needs. At this point, if you were just happy with using the recommended settings, then you can just select that as an option and your Home Assistant will start backing up. But then from this point onwards, behind the scenes, Home Assistant will just manage and automate all of those backups without any additional input from you. And you're done. Home Assistant's backed up. However, this is Home Assistant and it's open and it's flexible. So let's have a look at some of the custom options that we've got. The first option you've got is just a toggle for using automatic backups. So you can set this on or off. Obviously if it's off, the automatic backups aren't gonna run. And if it's on, they will. Next up is a drop down for the schedule. As of right now, you can only set the time to be 4.45, which is the default system time. In the future, you may be able to customize this to a time that suits your home assistant better. I imagine something like this will happen, but as of right now, it's just the system time. The third option you've got is the backup retention policy, so how many backups you want to keep. By default it uses three backups, but you do have the option for setting this to be a custom number, or you can opt to keep all backups. The way that the retention policy works is it will keep three backups, and once you get that fourth backup it will delete whatever the oldest one is, and put that one in its place, and so on and so forth. So you'll always have whatever the three latest ones are, or whatever number you set it to, you'll have that many. I think that makes sense, right? <laughs> Next, we've got the backup data. You'll notice that the top item is the Home Assistant settings, and you can't actually toggle this one on or off. 
The reason for this is because this is the data that needs to be used in order to actually perform a backup and perform a restore. So this is the fundamental things that you need for Home Assistant, so you can't turn this one off. The next option you've got is the historical data. So this is the data for things like your sensors and your energy dashboards and all that long-term data. So with this one, again, it's just a simple toggle on or off. And it's nice that all of these things are just simple toggles. Next, we've got media and shared folders. These are things that are usually associated with your Home Assistant. The media could be some music that you've dropped onto your Home Assistant, or it could be some snapshots from some camera feeds that you've got saved in Home Assistant. Things that are quite large data or can be large data, and you might not necessarily want those backing up, or maybe you do. So with that toggle, you can specify this. The final option you've got is for add-ons. With add-ons, you've got the choice of backing up all add-ons, none, or custom. If you do select custom, you can individually select add-ons that you want to be backed up. But it's worth noting, if you do make use of this custom option, whenever you add any new add-ons, they'll automatically not be backed up because you'll need to come into this setting and choose to back it up if you want to back it up. Next, we've got locations. With your backups, you can actually specify where you want your backups to be stored. The default location is actually the system drive that Home Assistant runs on. And you can also choose to make use of network storage and the Home Assistant Cloud if you're a Home Assistant Cloud user. With your Home Assistant Cloud subscription, you get access to five gigabytes of cloud storage. And this storage allows you to hold one backup, which will be the latest backup of your Home Assistant. At the time of recording this video, the only way to download your backup from the Home Assistant Cloud is to visit the Nabucasa website, log in, and then download your backup. You can then upload this to your Home Assistant, provide your encryption key and do your restore. In the future, it'd be really cool to see this become part of the onboarding process where you sign into your Home Assistant Cloud account and then you actually see that backup. So it's kind of like the Apple experience with your backups where it just connects and does the backup for you. But yeah, maybe in the future. Once you've created all of your custom settings, you can go ahead and press the backup button and Home Assistant will now start following your custom schedule. Should there be any issues or problems with the backup process, then Home Assistant will alert you about these and you'll see a little banner and it'll tell you what you need to do to fix the problem. Back on the backups page, you can see and manage any of your backups. And if we select the show all backups, then we can see each backup, its size, when it was created and how it was created, and also where it's located. From here, you can also select the three dots and you've got the options then to delete or download the backup. To restore a backup, you just select the backup and then you specify what you want restoring from that backup. So you can fine grain this to be individual things or you can do the whole backup. If you're downloading a backup from another location and you want to add it to your Home Assistant in order to do the restore, then if you select your backups, you'll find the option to do the upload. If at the beginning you forgot to save your encryption key and you forgot to put it somewhere safe, or maybe you wanted to download the emergency kit, you can do that here by just simply selecting that download option. You've also got the option for changing your key, so if for whatever reason you wanted to change the key for a specific backup, maybe you wanted to share it or maybe you just wanted to change the key, you can do that here. It's worth noting that if you do change your key, once you select that change key option, a backup will be done and it will then start using this new key. Anything that was backed up before generating this new key will need that old key, so you'll need to remember which key is which if this is something that you're going to be doing. And there we go guys, that's been a quick look at how to set up and use the new automated backup system. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, then don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell and you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes, my Patreons, and also my YouTube members. And if you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to support me, all in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.